So today I'm taking you through the AI tools I used to build my startup for zero dollars, but also I'm going to try out Cursor for the first time today and take you through my experience with that. So here we go. All right, I am armed with my breakfast croissant, starting off the morning with some food. Yeah, after I eat, I'll take you through my tech stack for how I maintain my software for free and give a comparison of Copilot, which I've been using for the past few months and Cursor for today, just to see what the difference in code is and sort of take you through the day in the life of me coding. This is also the first footage that I'm shooting in log, so it might be a little bit different stylistically from my other videos. So let's just take, for example, we have all of these plants in the background. I don't know how they're going to show up on camera, but I'll see what I can do in post-production. The context behind me switching from GitHub Copilot to trying out other things is Copilot has kind of been a little bit weird for me. It's It's been slowing up my VS code and so things like copy pasting gets really slow or it, it takes up a huge amount of CPU and memory for some reason. And, and the actual Copilot itself, it, it's good for like simple tasks, but it doesn't quite seem to get the larger changes that you need. And it does have some sort of context management of your code base, but a lot of people have been raving about Cursor. So I figured I'd give it a shot, you know? By default, you get a two week free trial. So it's technically free still. Let's start with my front end tech stack. I use Next.js and Tailwind, CSS, ShadCN a lot of the popular frameworks that a lot of other front end developers use and Next.js mainly for the large ecosystem it has. There's a lot of examples already written for Next.js projects versus V and other front end frameworks. And so I figured I'd just adopt Next.js since it's just so easy to find resources for it. I also use Vercel to host my applications, which has a free plan that is honestly pretty generous for small scale projects. And they, Next.js is written by Vercel. And so there's that integration already built in. You see Vercel has this hobby plan and it has a bunch of invocations, hundreds of thousands of invocations. And so, and so Vercel has a pretty generous free tier. I would recommend hosting apps on there if you're just starting out. There are some other projects, but if you have a Next.js app, the integration is just so seamless, especially with things like Superbase, which I also use from my database because it has a free tier and you can use it for your projects. It's, I haven't run into any limits yet. And so if you're prototyping especially, then I would recommend just these free tier plans. Obviously when you're starting your own projects, you don't want to spend any money. And so really just trying to get as much free tier credits as possible out of everything. Now for my backend, I use Fast API. It's more just so I feel comfortable in Python. And so I would just use whatever you're comfortable with in terms of your backend. If you even need it, sometimes you can get away with just using Next.js. To host my Python backend, I, I still do it in Vercel just because it's free, but I'm thinking of moving to something else like Render. It has more support for Python projects and frankly, Vercel's serverless invocations can get kind of pricey in the long term. But that, that's more of a future problem when I start to scale. Again, it's super easy just to throw projects up onto Vercel and I, I would highly recommend it. It's, it's free again, you know. At the end of the day, right, hosting projects on Vercel, free. Superbase free, XJS fast API for my frameworks. And so a lot of that can be done for free. Even things like using Resend for sending emails is also free. Stripe integration is free for the most part. I just did it in my last video, but you do have to pay a fee on every transaction that you process. But at the essence, you don't have to pay for any plans. You don't have, you don't have to do anything else besides that. So if you get revenue, sure, you can pay a fee on top of it. Even using my code editor GitHub Copilot was free since I don't know, they just never charged me and they put me on the pro tier. So I honestly don't know why I wasn't banging anything, but I think that I do want to try out code editors, which is the whole point of the video is trying out cursor, just testing it out, seeing what I learn and seeing if and why you should use cursor over GitHub Copilot. Thinking about it now, the only thing I have paid for in the past is my domain, but domains are cheap. They're like $10 for a .com domain. I don't think you should really get an AI domain unless, unless you just have the money to burn, but the .com one should be suffice, especially for like early validation, and you can always buy a new domain later. But in any case, let me start getting into coding and see how Cursor performs. And so I've downloaded the free trial there, and so let me just play with it a little bit and see what happens. 
So I'm not sure if other people do this, but one of the things I immediately do is when I try something out or do something new, I, I do insert best practices. So cursor best practices. I just looked up on Reddit or whatever on the documentation. And one of the first things that comes up is cursor rules. And so what are cursor rules? They're essentially like similar to OpenAI's ChatGPT system where you can kind of prompt the system. You can kind of direct the way you interact with cursor. So let's, for example, there's this GitHub repo of cursor best practices where say I'm using Python fast. They have an example prompt for fast API projects in Python that you can load into as a cursor rule. I'll link that in the description below. A lot of resources out there again, like I'm, I'm learning it too. I haven't coded yet, but I'm, I'm still learning the ID and I'll try to experiment with it throughout the day and give you my thoughts on it. But cursor rule seems to be a, a good first. Let me know how you use cursor or Winsor for any tips that improve your coding workflow. I'd be more than happy to try them out. I think one of the craziest features is when you're prompting the cursor agent and you're saying, hey, can you do X task for me doing it this way? Obviously, it's kind of up to you to prompt it correctly, but it's kind of crazy just to see your code editor making changes as you're coding. And so, right, like it'll, it'll just write out this whole section here and you'll have to ex accept the changes or reject them. Again, it's like up to you as a human to kind of see which changes are okay and which is not. And, and ultimately at the end of the day, right, their code is only as good as you reviewing them. But it, I think it does save a lot of time because I don't actually have to physically write a lot of this code. Even with Copilot, for example, it would give you the code in the chat and you would have to copy paste and kind of figure out and debug. But with Cursor, it kind of just like writes it all for you. And I'm sure Copilot can do that, but Cursor seems to have a better agentic flow where it looks at the relevant files, plans out what it's going to do and then just starts writing the code in the code editor. And so, so far it's been really cool to see it. it honestly, when it writes the code, it, it automatically compiles it and then you, you can see it change on your laptop screen, which is really cool. So, so far super impressed with it and I'll just keep chugging along. You know what I feel like isn't really in a lot of videos is nobody takes a nap. Certainly like a lot of these day in the life videos, somebody's taking a nap midday. And so I just had lunch, I'm getting a food coma and debating if I should take a nap. We'll see. So I've pretty much had a full day of coding with Cursor and I think my final thoughts is it is a bit better than GitHub Copilot at least for my experience personally with full stack development. I think that you're really only as good as how you prompt and so obviously it's not a magic bullet for coding. You still need to be able to prompt it in a good way and, and you need to be able to read the code and, and make sure that it makes sense and isn't gibberish. But for the most part, it writes decent code in it. And the agent mode does look across the different files and fixes its own errors in a decent way. So that's honestly like pretty nice. I think my final conclusion is, yeah, I think I'll, I'm going to stick with Cursor for a while. It may be the very first thing that I pay for. You know, if you have any thoughts about it, if, if you use Windsurf or any other code editors, like let me know in the comments below what you think of them. That's pretty much it for today. I am going to play around with color grading this video because I'm shooting everything in log now. So that might be a bit of a learning, but I just wanted to make a quick video with the tools that I made and the code and trying out cursor. And so see you next week.